we have Miss Yuna, all the way from Ukraine. She is a voracious reader, curious in everything from space exploration to paleobiology, from responsible artificial intelligence to the constructs of resilience. She is working as a tech for humanity researcher in Singapore. Ms. Yuna, please, the stage is yours. We're ready to hear your raw story. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ashwini, for, for such wonderful introduction. And actually, this is my privilege to share uh, this stage after uh, Viveka, who is not only my dearest friend, but she is also the person who I, like, uh, who I look up uh, to because she's so wonderful. Okay, so let me start from the very beginning. Uh, I think I spoke to some of you today in the morning and you could have seen uh, my beige, which uh, says Ukrainian. And this is kind of very weird, uh, very weird uh, way of introducing yourself by nationality. But this is not only my nationality being Ukrainian, this is actually the confluence of all the values that nowadays Ukrainians are fighting for. And I'm, I will try to represent, to uh, talk about this more uh, by uh, talking about my life journey. Uh, so. You should know that uh, three days ago, on 24th August, Ukraine, my beloved home country, celebrated its 32nd independence. This is a journey marked by uh, fights for freedom, for occupation, and finally reached the point uh, when uh, Ukraine uh, moved to self-discovery, self-identification, and the value strengthening. And today I, stay, I stand here in front of you not only as a uh, witness of this process, but also as a living testament of how, uh, how resilience uh, how uh, growth, uh, personal growth and determination can lead the way uh, in, in personal development. So uh, let me start from the very beginning, uh, and this is, uh, it will bring us to uh, the small South Ukrainian city named Kherson, uh, where I took my first breath. So uh, I was born in a family uh, of loving parents, they were both architects, uh, and I had to grow in a very, uh, in a very unique environment of uh, economical uncertainties that led Ukraine, in, uh, that, that uh, accompanied Ukraine in the first years after gaining the independence. Uh, my parents seized every opportunity to uh, provide me with a means for holistic development. Sometimes even sacrificing their own comforts, uh, they ensured that I get the best things that I could have uh, I, that I could have ever uh, gotten. So I still remember uh, my first Barbie. I, I, I remember my first uh, game console, the first uh, series of kids' books. Uh, then we moved to English classes, uh, then to poetry club, to uh, association of programmers. So my parents actually supported uh, the like very interdisciplinary, very multifaceted development uh, of a person. Uh, so they really invested in my future, and you know that. Uh, Personal development and holistic development, this is uh, the symphony of different influences. And usually our parents, they are conductors in this symphony, right? So uh, my mother taught me uh, to read when I was four years old. And since then, uh, my parents always supported my uh, urge for new knowledge, for curiosity, uh, for uh, exploration. Uh, so since, since the very childhood, uh, parents instilled the appropriate values in children. So for example, my mom always told me that I'm unique. Of course, it was disproved uh, uh, at some later points of life, but uh, still it helped, it helped to anchor me during the chaotic teenage years. My father instilled truly Ukrainian values to me. He told me, uh, don't be a follower, fight for justice, and always have your own opinion. And it actually helped me to uh, build my own identity over the time. So, and of course, both of my parents, they were great supporters uh, of education as the only way to propel in life and in, in, in self-development. So uh, then, actually, education is a beacon of enlightenment called us to Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, and my parents sat on this journey. So we moved to Kyiv, and uh, you should know about the Ukrainian education system, that it is very merit-based. Merit so it awards people who uh, are diligent and knowledgeable enough. So it was quite easy for me to secure uh, budget slots in the... Uh, in the finest high school and later at the university. So among all the subjects that I studied, chemistry actually uh, enthralled me. Uh, chemistry is such a pure, logical, uh, predictable kind of science that I wanted to uh, take as my, uh, as my background. Uh, so I entered the chemistry department afterwards. However, the quest for knowledge didn't stop here and it expanded beyond the classroom. So I took multiple courses in online platforms and then I attended different talks on various interdisciplinary topics because chemistry was not sufficient enough to provide the questions that I had for the universe, for the human behavior, for the intricacies of uh, decision making, and so on. Uh, then later, 
uh, I received a master's degree and I decided to stay uh, at the chemistry department as chemistry engineer. This was the uh, time when I could travel abroad for internships to European universities. That was the, pl uh, that was the, the place where I could uh, organize collaborations through sharing uh, common uh, research ideas. And it was like wonderful time because I was very much impressed by uh, the cultural diversity, uh, the academic environment that I could have met uh, in, in various universities. So uh, at that time, I decided that I want to do the same. Uh, I also want to go abroad. I want to live in this uh, very diverse environment and I want to continue uh, doing, uh, like working in my research. Uh, then uh, there was a call from Singapore that set me on eight year and counting uh, journey to Singapore. This is actually quite an uh, interesting story how I managed to secure a place uh, here at Nanyang Technological University for my PhD. Uh, as I mentioned, I took a lot of uh, courses in um, online platforms, right? And at that time, I was taking a course in Coursera in forensic science. And uh, uh, the professor who delivered the course was actually from NTU, Nanyang Technological University. Uh, and I thought, okay, I haven't heard about this university. Let me Google about it. And then I found that it was the best, one of the best universities in the world. And moreover, the material science department was uh, the first best in the world after MIT on certain years. Uh, that was amazing, and this is kind of, uh, so I, I started contacting my professor who, uh, my future professor, who uh, worked in, in the area that, uh, where I could apply my skills. Uh, and he had a slot because recently they received a grant on sports science. And luckily, my background was analytical chemistry and specifically sports science, so I fit perfectly into that grant which dealt with the development of biosensors for athletes. Uh, so I came to Singapore. And Singapore, you know, this is the canvas of opportunities and possibilities. I was immediately bombarded by various workshops, uh, entrepreneurship and leadership uh, classes and opportunities. It was amazing. So actually, that was a whirlwind that stretched beyond the day's hours. But what struck me the most was the community. A community that supported, that cared, that challenged, and it accepted everybody despite their background. So I was accepted and I was empowered. And then later I realized that I should uh, not really realized, I even felt that I need to give back to the same community that nurtured and raised me here. Uh, so during my PhD years, I founded the Young Researchers Network. That was a platform for uh, young researchers, for PhD students and for uh, postdoctoral fellows uh, to come together and to discuss their research projects. Uh, it uh, aimed to promote the interdisciplinarity in thinking. Uh, to, uh, it was aimed to make people ask uh, weird questions, uh, to come up with some uh, provocative ideas, uh, some, some, to discuss some curious things. Uh, just because during this, uh, this journey I met a lot of outstanding, brilliant young minds, I decided that the world should know more about them. So that's why I decided to found the magazine, which was called Simply PhD, uh, and where we published the raw stories of uh, PhD students uh, about their journey in research, about their motivation, how they moved to something that they were doing right now. Uh, there were not so many editions, maybe two or three, yeah, but uh, because then later I graduated. So I graduated with uh, a degree in material science, with a PhD degree, but I was not so much satisfied because it was very far from the community work that I wanted to do. Uh, so I decided to pivot into the responsible technology field. Uh, actually, I was also very much tired by the, fr from the lab codes, uh, wet labs, and smelly solvents. I don't know, those people who took some chemistry classes, you should know uh, what it looks like. Uh, but responsible technology seemed so simple, so beautiful, and so beneficial for the uh, society. Of course, it was a challenging way uh, to do so, especially if you're trained in material science and you, you do not have any solid background in responsible technology. Uh, however, all my curiosity, all my interdisciplinary knowledge, uh, heterogeneous knowledge that I had, uh, it managed to convince my future boss that I will be suitable for running this job. So uh, currently what we are doing, uh, we're actually trying to evaluate and mitigate the impact of technology on society and on humanity. We are promoting multi-stakeholder uh, approach to uh, 
creating uh, new technologies. Uh, we are building, we are trying to embed the diversity of use into creating the technology because every technology uh, serves to solve some needs on the ground and it can't be done, it can, it can be done without the participation of the crowd itself, uh, of the community. So at that time, we had a couple of projects uh, on uh, carbon footprint measurement for the university. So we introduced the concept of transparency to nudge universities report their carbon emissions. Uh, then we also evaluated the resilience and uh, forward planning of universities that happened during the COVID. And then we also did something about responsible AI and about the landscape, uh, its landscape in Singapore. So nowadays, our projects vary from social trust in AI to socio-digital resilience. Uh, actually, <clears throat> the project on socio-digital resilience was very much inspired by uh, Ukrainian people because who are the most resilient people nowadays? They're probably Ukrainians. Uh, actually, I received that task from my boss and then I traveled uh, to Ukraine and it was half a year ago during the winter. And you, you remember, uh, it, maybe you, you could have heard somewhere that, uh, that the, those were dark times for Ukrainians because the energy infrastructure was bombarded by Russians. So there was no heat, there was no electricity, there was no water. So I went there to bring power banks, lamps, torches for my parents. And what I saw there, I thought it would be quite gloomy, sad and depressed uh, type of environment. But no, because people are living, building, constructing something, they're giving birth to their children, uh, they, they are taking courses, they are, they are studying something, they're not leaving the country because they believe that their skills will be relevant uh, to rebuild that country. And they uh, leverage the digitalization and the technologies in order to help them um, advance, uh, advance the activities and advance in their lives. And that was so amazing, it was super inspiring, so it actually took me two days to come up with a concept, with a framework for the socio-digital resilience in the cities, and thanks to Ukrainian people. Uh, okay, moving next, then, uh, so nowadays I'm actually involved in a bunch of different uh, associations for alumni and for postdoctoral fellows, all within NTU. Uh, and this is like a natural progression from the uh, uh, from my uh, student leadership position that I had during PhD. Uh, uh, PhD studies. Uh, there I used to be the president of Gradient Students Association and that was also a unique experience because I had to lead a uh, very multicultural uh, group of people. Uh, everybody has their own uh, personalities and you as a leader, uh, you need to have that uh, power and that humility to, uh, to, 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 make this, uh, to make this place as a friendly environment. I have learned a lot. I learned a lot in patience, in tolerance, in communication skills, in negotiation skills. Uh, I learned how to take ownership for my own uh, work, how to be responsible and all that kind of stuff. So actually, uh, it made me uh, revise even some of my attitudes. That was the power of diverse uh, uh, crowd that I worked with. Uh, yeah, so uh, nowadays we are working with uh, alumni and postdocs and what we are doing, we are trying to help them build the community. We are trying to uh, arrange the places for the networking. Uh, we are actually, we are very grateful for everything that we have received during our lives and we are trying to provide that opportunity for the younger minds, for people who are still following, uh, like following our steps. Um, and actually, I don't know if in a couple of years, my journey pivots again. Maybe I'm tired of responsible technology and I decide to do something different. But what I know for sure is that those core values that I discovered only maybe like 10 years ago when I self-identified myself uh, will be to, uh, to support community, to work with the community, to always uh, account for their views and opinions. And uh, this will remain as a uh, like founding stone uh, for me in the future. So uh, today, uh, maybe as a lesson for everybody, uh, you should always remember that as Ukrainians nowadays, uh, each one of us has the power to resist various adverse events, to start from the net zero, uh, to uh, adapt to the adverse events, and to uh, prosper in life through the, through the power of knowledge and education and curiosity. And I'm very thankful to Bala for uh, organizing this event and for inviting me here. Thank you very much. Where is Bala? Yeah, I also don't see him from, from the stage. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your attention, Jan. I hope to connect to you later at the networking session.